If you're like most people, the medicine cabinet in your bathroom ends up being the repository for everything you use in that room. Toothpaste and toothbrushes, makeup and moisturizers, bubble bath, and all sorts of shaving equipment. In amongst these necessities are the over-the-counter medications and maybe even some prescription drugs. It's these medicines that are often old and forgotten until you need them. With cold and flu season upon us, what should you have in your family medicine cabinet? And how should you monitor those meds you buy with and without a prescription? We asked Sherry Torkus, a pharmacist and author of the Canadian Encyclopedia of Natural Medicine and Saving Women's Hearts. She looks at medicine cabinets like a pharmacist and says she's found many are very unorganized and unsafe. When I look at people's medicine cabinets, I see a cluttered mess. A lot of the bottles not necessarily organized well, and in a lot of cases, people hang on to their expired medications. I've seen situations where people have kept medications that are 10 years beyond expiry. So what should an organized and efficient medicine cabinet look like? Your medicine cabinet should be organized, and it should be up to date. And you should make sure that your medicine cabinet is not accessible to any young children. If there's toddlers in the house, it's really important that you have locks on the cabinet doors so that little ones can't get in there. It's actually surprising the number of children that have managed to open safety caps on medications. And in terms of what the cabinet should look like, you really should have a wide arrangement of remedies available to treat common conditions that occur. For example, aches and pains fever, headaches, tummy aches, cold and flu symptoms. Those are the types of things when you have an issue and it's coming on in the evening and you don't want to run out to the pharmacy to grab something. It's great if you have something right on hand that you can use. The environment of your bathroom also plays a part in where you keep certain drugs. Humidity can cause degradation or breakdown of the product and so I would not recommend storing any drugs over the counter products, any vitamin supplements in an environment that is warm and steamy. Now if your bathroom has a fan and everybody uses the fan, that's not such a problem. So you may want to look either to store it if you have an alternative, a secondary bathroom that's just a two-piece bathroom where there's no shower or bathtub, that would be an option. A hall closet, a bedroom closet that's up high, even a kitchen cabinet that is not not close to a window or not near an oven or a stove would be another option. Torcus says that you need to look at your OTC drugs every so often for their expiration dates. These are generally listed on the bottle with a lot number. But are pills that are just a few months past expiration dangerous or ineffective? Generally speaking, products are good for a period of time. It's hard to say any hard and fast rules beyond the expiry date, with a few exceptions. And one exception would be tetracycline, which is a prescription antibiotic. It can degrade or break down into potentially harmful compounds, so you should not take it. But with the case of most other drugs, when they are used beyond the expiry, the only problem would be is that you may not get the full amount of the product. For example, if you have, say, acetaminophen, 500 milligrams, and you're taking it a couple years beyond the expiry date, you may not have that full 500 milligrams. You may have a slightly lesser amount, but it's not going to be toxic or problematic. Most of us who take the same OTC meds year after year don't bother to read the labels for drug interactions. However, if you start taking a prescription drug, Torca says that OTC meds can sometimes interact with them. She says you should always inform your doctor and your pharmacist about the meds and supplements you already have in your cabinet. That's something that I typically do when I'm talking to a patient. When I take their prescription, their initial prescription, if they're a new patient, I ask them if they are taking anything over the counter, any vitamins or supplements, because those products can certainly interact with prescription medications. And what I would advise people is that if you're getting a prescription filled and the pharmacist does not ask you what other products you're taking, you should offer up that information. Also, if you're getting prescriptions filled at other pharmacies, it's good to share that information so that everybody's on the same page. Everybody knows exactly what you're taking. These days, many Americans are opting for fewer of the familiar pain drugs and replacing them with natural remedies. Torca says that there are pain relievers and anti-inflammatories that have few, if any, side effects that are still effective for a number of conditions. 
there's been a lot of research into natural treatments for joint health, and we've seen pharmacies and health food stores carry a lot of products like glucosamine and chondroitin for joint health. But there are some newer products that offer some advantages. One would be biocell collagen, and biocell collagen is used for joint health. Another option that I would recommend is curcumin. Curcumin is from the turmeric plant, and it has natural anti-inflammatory properties. So it's used for joint issues, and it's also used for even inflammatory bowel disease and a whole lot of other conditions. Torcas says that products for coughs, colds, and flu can also be switched over to natural remedies. She says that these are safe and effective, especially for children under six years of age. I would suggest having some vitamin C available. If you're feeling run down, you're feeling on the verge of getting sick, vitamin C we know is a very important antioxidant for the immune system and it may help to shorten the duration and severity of symptoms. There are regular tablets and chewables. There's also effervescent powders such as emergency which is a little sachet that you put into water. And children can take vitamin C as well. It's safe for younger kids. And same with zinc lozenges. A remedy your grandmother might have used is ginger. Torcas says that real ginger ale or ginger capsules can help ease a queasy stomach. Melatonin is a natural remedy that's become popular for sleep problems and for people on shift work who find it difficult to get to sleep at odd hours. One more word of advice. Torcas says that if you have just a few OTC pills left in a bottle, don't be tempted to mix them in with the new bottle you just bought. The reason for that is if there is ever a drug recall, the manufacturers always release the lot and the expiry date for the product, and that's on the bottle. So if you're mixing a couple of different products together, then you won't know what products were affected by the recall. So I think it's good to keep them in their original bottle, and that way you know what the lot and expiry date is in the event that something happens. Torcas adds that your pharmacist is a good resource for questions about any drug prescriptions and OTC. She says pharmacists have databases they use that can indicate drug interactions, expirations, and safe use of drugs for children. For more information on Sherry Torcas, you can log on to her website at Sherry T-O-R-K-O-S dot com or through a link to our website, radiohealthjournal.net. Our writer-producer this week is Pat Reuter. Our production directors are Sean Waldron and Nick Hofstra. I'm Lynn Holly. Is your daily routine putting you at risk for catching the cold or flu? Each year, there are one billion cases of the common cold or flu in the U.S., which typically begins when virus droplets are inhaled from a sneeze or cough or transmitted by touch. Placing yourself within close proximity to infected people or surfaces may put you at a higher risk. Curad Chief Nursing Officer and Advisor to the American Nurses Foundation, Marty Moore, has a few suggestions for staying protected. We all know it's impossible to never leave your home or wear an outbreak contamination suit to ward off germs. But you can assess your risk and take simple steps to help protect yourself, such as using hand sanitizer, wearing a Curad antiviral face mask when out in public, and avoiding excessive workouts. Whether you're a working mom, stay-at-home dad, or college student, Marty advises all people to take a cold and flu assessment quiz and receive a personalized protection plan at Curad.com.